Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to 31 Days of Cut Files with MK and Janet, which I'm combining today with Mixed Media Mayhem. Today, the inspiration for Mixed Media Mayhem comes from Memory Keep Art, and she is super talented, you guys. Um, go follow her on Instagram, and she now has a YouTube channel, so you can go and check that out also. And I just really loved this Feeling Frosty piece. So I am going to um, scrap lift it, but I'm going to go with the reds and yellows because I'm going to go with some flames. Now the uh, cut file for today in 31 Days of Cut Files is a leafy vine that I created. And... I am going to use it more like flames rather than a uh, vine. So um, it's going to be altered and m maybe not so much. It's not going to be um, red like flames. I'm going to do it in black and gold. So it's going to kind of have that flame feeling to it, but it's not going to be red like a flame. So anyway, we're starting out with a little bit of alcohol ink. I believe that is what was used in the original over to the right hand corner there. And I am using some Picasso alcohol ink in three different colors. I'm going to hold those up when I'm done using them here so you'll be able to see the names of the colors. But uh, I'm learning quite a bit about the alcohol ink because I don't use it very often and I haven't really played with it for any extensive amount of time. Now the photo you see there is a hot dog on a stick over an open fire. That was the photo that I was going to use and you're going to see it pop up a so all the way through this video because I don't change it out until the very end and uh, when I got all done with it I liked this layout so much that I was like you know what I have an anniversary photo of us at a uh, hibachi type restaurant where they have all of the flames on the grill or griddle and so that's what I'm going to end up using for my photo um, I do have a story to tell about this hot dog over the flames, but it's going to be saved for another day. So what I'm learning on the alcohol ink is I'm spraying my paper here. I actually have Yupo paper, which is, um, it's, it's plastic basically, you guys. Um, and that spray bottle with the black top on it is full of alcohol. So I went ahead and got my Yupo paper wet with alcohol, and then I put drops of the alcohol ink down onto the wet area because I want it to flow and move and then I have a uh, pipette there and I'm picking up more alcohol and dropping it on to the Yupo paper to let all of the colors kind of flow together a bit here. So I'm trying to make it look like I said like flames not like uh, a a murder scene happened on my paper so hopefully at the end it looks okay I know that's kind of a risk that you take with using red mixed media I am also adding a little bit of Liquitex acrylic ink here I don't know really how it's going to react with the alcohol but I am dropping a little alcohol into it to let it flow as well and it, it does an okay job um, I wasn't sure if I should use water or alcohol this is all kind of like an experiment if you will <laughs> um, and it goes okay, but my my acrylic ink needs to be thinned out a little bit. It's a little bit thick. So uh, here are the three colors. I'm using Poppy Red, Marigold, and Sunset. And that's giving me that nice flame-like uh, look. And then I am actually sprinkling a little Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine over the top. And then I am using a little bit of water um, on the tip of my paintbrush here to move that gold Heidi Swap Color Shine Actually, this is the acrylic ink, not the Heidi Swap color shine. Um, I'm moving some of that gold around. Ah, actually, you know what? I think it is the the Heidi Swap stuff. Anyway, I am using it on both, and you can see here on the on the gold ink that splotch there was gold ink. Um, it it doesn't move as well. It kind of just wipes it off of the background. So I added a little bit more red um, uh, alcohol ink, and I am using this blower. I don't know what it's actually called. It's from Tim Holtz, but it allows you to move the uh, alcohol around by spraying it. And I, what I learned is that you don't pump that thing really fast. You kind of do it a little slower and it moves it a little nicer rather than um, short, quick bursts of air. You want slower bursts of air. Now this is regular paper that I'm using and I'm using some Dilutions Postbox Red and uh, 
let's see here, yellow, lemon zest yellow, and um, I am just spraying this regular paper, and then I sprinkled some more gold Heidi Swap Color Shine over the top, and I'm going to use a little bit of Stardust Butter from the Crafters Workshop in Marcasite Black and that's got kind of like a silver glittery effect in it but the glitter is so fine that it's not showing up a lot of silver because I'm kind of trying to keep this towards the more yellow tones like the gold and then I went with some champagne star bust, star dust butter from the crafters workshop and that one is definitely gold and I'm kind of just putting that on the edges of these this uh the two larger pieces of paper because I want those to have a little bit more of a defining line on them. Now the two smaller ones have a white line where I tore the paper and I actually want that white line to be there. And I am using some Stickles Glitter Gel in Nebula and uh, rubbing that on the edge and it's gonna have a lot more shine and um, gold to it. You're gonna see a little bit more of these things in the close-ups hopefully and um, I'm really liking the way that they look. Now the black edge wasn't quite black enough for me, so I went to my Dilutions Black Marble uh, ink and I just rubbed it along the edge of the paper to soak in. And now I'm putting some black splatter on these two larger pieces. I didn't really do a lot of splatter on the smaller pieces. Um, I just really wanted it on the dark, on the bigger pieces to have a little bit of a different vibe to it when it's all layered up. So I'm adding a little bit more of the gold or actually it's champagne stardust butter to the two smaller pieces and then here is the vine. This is the cut file for the day today and it's kind of like a houseplant vi um, vine and I just sprayed it with black marble dilutions and then a little gold Heidi Swap color shine. I have this really, really large text stamp. This is from Stampendous, and I am just putting a little bit of black archival ink onto it so that it's permanent and stamping it down. The product number on that's DCR103. It's super old, you guys, so I don't know if that you'll be even be able to find it. I'll try to remember to um, list it down below, but again, I don't know that you'll be able to find it. It's It's been in my stash for ages. And now I'm using some paper glaze in primrose yellow, which is a super, super light yellow. Almost looks like white. And I'm using that one because I am in fact out of white. And the stencil butter that I've been using in place of the white is pearl, it's a, called pearl. It's not as white, vibrant white as um, I would like. And so I went with this yellow primrose instead. And now I'm going to go ahead and back my photos. Again, you're still seeing that same photo, but I'm going to swap it out again. Like I said, at the very end, in the close-ups, you will see the actual photo that I end up using. And um, I really like the way that it ends up looking. These two pieces of paper are just from my stash, you guys, uh, or actually from my scraps. So just a wood grain, and then this piece that has like the smoky gray on one side and the red, reddish yellow brick on the other. And I chose those because for their depth of color and for the darkness that they're going to bring to the layout. I've got so much going on with all of these reds. I need to add a little bit more in these darker colors to get that kind of smoky charred look. And this stamp is from Tailored Expre Expressions. It is called Rough Draft Background. And um, I really like it. It's just a grid, but it's kind of... Uh, a worn distressed grid and I know these things are popping up on the screen super fast again they're listed down below for you in case they are of interest to you but um, I wanted to add a little bit more black to to my corners and so that's what I chose to use and now I'm going to cut a cut apart my leafy vine to make it look kind of like the flames that lick up but I did them in black because I really wanted them to show more than if I had done them in the red or the orange. I don't want them to like uh, disappear into the background. I want them to kind of have that darkness around the photo. Now I've got a couple of products from some assemblage required. I've got these uh, branches. I think these are, I don't know if they're called spooky branches or what. Again, I'll list them down below. Um, but I am 
inking or not inking them up i am putting some of that market marcasite stardust butter on them and then i've got these gold uh branches and i'm um, going to use both sets of those the darker ones to bring in the darker colors and then the gold to bring in a reflective surface this tag is one of the uh packaging pieces from not just for boys and it's just a wood grain, kind of the smoky gray wood grain. And I decided to ink that up and use that underneath my photograph to kind of bring in more depth of color. Also, um, the inspiration piece does have some layers underneath the photograph, including a tag. So I thought that works. I believe she also might have some thread on hers. So I'm bringing in some thread as well. I'm going to bring in some black and some gold just to bring in some different textures. And then I know she used a bit of crackle paste in her corners. I don't use any crackle paste because I did a little test of crackle paste and then paper glaze and um, texture paste from Ranger and the uh, stencil butter on a piece of Yupo paper and the crackle paste just kind of peeled right off. So I didn't use that. The other three seemed to work fine. And so I, that's why I went with the, another reason I went with the paper glaze, but um, that's why I didn't use the crackle paste. So I think this is going to look really good even without it. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. I do have this little flame charm in silver and I know I was trying to keep it more gold, but I decided I'm going to go ahead and use this charm because it's a little fire and I thought it would be perfect for this layout. That is also from Not Just For Boys. And it's been in my stash for quite a while, you guys. I, I don't know that it's even available anymore. And then same with these little clips and tags on the right-hand side next to the black spool of thread. That little tiny tag and the red little pin is going to be pinned with these other items to the top of my tag just to bring in additional texture. Now the string that I'm using there, it has a gold thread in it um, and I, I think that works really well. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. And then I'm just tucking my leaves under and gluing them to my photo, um, my photo cluster basically so that I can kind of move everything around and get it in the right spot. And uh, once I'm happy with that, then I'll glue the whole thing down. Now here is where I'm adding this acrylic gold piece just to bring in more texture and a little bit something different. Um, I really like the reflective surf surface and I think it, it pairs well with all of the other gold that I've got going on in here. And so I'm pretty happy with that. And then I'm gonna add some of the black uh, branches to each side also to kind of offset the shininess and bring in some more depth of color um, or more grounding colors because it's, they're so dark. It just kind of looks really good there. And you know, that marcasite butter has a little bit of silver in it. So it pairs well with that little flame charm. And so and at the end of the day, I think it all looks good together. I'm going to go ahead and trim off my corners in, in a bit here so that you can get a really, um, you can really get a better look at this layout. Now the Yupo paper that I have is pretty flimsy. Um, I, it holds up great to the alcohol ink because it's, it's plastic and nothing like seeps in. The alcohol just dries on top of it. Um, I did seal it before I started doing any of the mixed media right over the top. Other, I, it, I only had the alcohol ink on it and I sealed it with some Kmar spray. It's from Krylon and it's spelled K-A-M-A-R. Um, and I, I don't remember where I saw that that is a good sealant for alcohol ink, but, um, I remember seeing it somewhere and I bought it at one point and so now I'm, I'm finally using it you guys. Um, so it does give it a nice uh, finish like a satin photograph and I really like that because otherwise sometimes the alcohol ink can seem kind of dull when it dries and this keeps it from, from looking that way. It keeps it nice and vibrant and shiny. And so hopefully it's going to last over time. I, uh, this is, I don't do these kind of layouts with alcohol ink very often. Like I said, I don't have a lot of experience with it. I think I've done it one other layout with alcohol ink and maybe like three or four card fronts. And so this was kind of a little bit outside my wheelhouse, but you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying playing with it and having a, a fun time 
making this layout. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, well, I'm going to just use this photo of the, of the hot dog being roasted over the fire because I didn't know how this was going to come out. And I was like, you know, if, if the stories, you know, it's going to tell a story, but if the photo's not fabulous, that's fine. Um, although I think that's a really cool photo of the flames with the wood charred in the background and everything. But, um, I just, that's one reason I decided to switch out the photo and make it a little bit more, um, I don't know, more meaningful, even though the other photo is not that great either, but, uh, it is documenting a little bit more of a, a special time, I, I guess. Um, so basically the story is with this hot dog is, uh, I have a lot of memories of roasting hot dogs over a flame when we would go shore camping boating and when we would go camping at our cabin and all of that kind of stuff. I've even gone camping when all we had was a grill and a fork and a, 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 a pack of hot dogs. And, um, in my youth, I wouldn't do that now, but, um, you know, so I've got quite a few stories of that, but, uh, the story that I am going to tell with my other photo is basically my husband uh, surprised me with dinner out at this hibachi place for one of our anniversaries. And I actually would have to look at the tag and even tell you the year. Um, but it was really nice because a lot of times for our actual anniversary, we don't do anything big or fabulous unless it's like a major anniversary, like 20 or 25 years or um, our 30th is coming up soon. And uh, we are doing a cruise for that. So anyway, um, most of the time we just kind of like, you know, we can celebrate it pretty much any day. It does, it's not, which sounds terrible. Like we, we don't spend time together doing fun things like that, but we do. Um, <laughs> it's just not usually on the day of the anniversary. So there's the photograph of um, the hibachi and the guy who was cooking, the chef that was cooking, created a big heart out of the rice. And it was really just the two of us at the table because we went at a kind of an odd time and uh, we really enjoyed it. So those are the close-ups. Go and check out what MK's got on her channel today for uh, 31 Days of Cut Files. And um, there will be a bunch of people playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem, but we're no longer providing a list because we have opened it up to anyone to play along. So go and join the Facebook group for that, Mi Mixed Media Mayhem Scrapbooking, and you can play along each week as well. Sometimes there's recipes and sometimes there is an actual scrap lift. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I will see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.